here is your latest African news. Africa wide, reflecting on the needs of Africa's working mothers. Workplace inequalities and cultural restrictions and obligations mean that working mothers must often make a choice between staying at home with children or fully showing up at work. For many African mothers, the compromise usually involves decelerating their career growth or shying away from additional responsibilities in the workplace. No wonder the rise in gender gap at senior levels across sectors remains so, so wide. Now is the time to go beyond the normal and empower Africa's working mothers for upshared prosperity, which can only be achieved if more room is made for women at the leadership table. South Sudan. President dissolved parliament as part of a peace deal. South Sudan's president, Salva Kiir, has dissolved parliament, opening the way for lawmakers from opposing sides of the country's civil war to be appointed under a 2018 peace accord. Kiir's decision was announced on public television on Saturday evening, but no date was given as to when the new parliament will begin their work. The setting up of a new legislative body was part of an accord that was signed back in September 2018 between Kier and Vice President Rick Makar for years on opposing sides during the five-year civil war. Rwanda and South Africa Rwanda and South Africa set to begin development and manufacturing of COVID-19 vaccines in Africa. Faced with what is described as vaccine nationalization and export restrictions on pharmaceutical products, Africa is feeling exposed, prompting the need to push for African-based solutions. South Africa and Rwanda have already taken bold steps toward the manufacturing of COVID-19 vaccines within the continent. Really exciting stuff. South Africa, Zulu Queen's eldest son named the next monarch. Prince Miso Zulu Zulu, the eldest son of South Africa's late Zulu King, Goodwill Zulitini, and his recently departed Regent Queen, has been named the next monarch as a succession battle plays itself out within the royal family. The 46-year-old prince was named the heir to the throne in the last will of Queen Shiyiwe Mantfomi Lamini Zulu, which was read out at the royal palace this past Friday. Since the death of the late queen, who was Zuelitini's third wife and the sister of Eswatini's king Maswati III, various factions in the royal family have sought to put forward their own candidates to claim the throne. Ethiopia. Voters decide Ethiopia's election credibility, not EU, say scholars. Ethiopian Social Democratic Party President Prof. Bayene Petrus said the absence of EU election observers does not have any negative impact on the election process as they were playing insignificant roles during the precious elections, apart from adding fuel to confrontations. Prof. Bayene further said that he had never seen the ones who have come as observers, including the European Union election observers effectively discharging their responsibilities during the last elections. Instead, they had acted as tourists coming for refreshments and leaving the main agenda aside. Chad. Chad claims win over rebels after President Debbie's death. The military in Chad has claimed victory against northern rebels following weeks of fighting. The conflict against Libya-based rebels threw the country into crisis when Pe President Idris Deby died after being wounded on the front line last month. The military takeover under the leadership of Mr. Deby's son has been condemned by the opposition and civil society groups leading to protests. Sunday's victory parade was aimed at boosting the popularity of the Chadian military at a time of great uncertainty in the country. Kenya. Kenya's tea production at risk over climate change. A new report says that climate change threatens to cause a dramatic fall in the output of black tea from the world's biggest producer, Kenya, suggests that tea production in Kenya could fall just over a quarter by 2050. Other tea producing nations such as your India, Sri Lanka and even China will also be affected by rising temperatures and unpredictable weather conditions. 
Researchers warned that the change in climate could also affect the taste and the smell of tea. Latest COVID-19 statistics. As of May 10, confirmed cases of COVID-19 from 55 African countries reached 4,632,506. Reported deaths in Africa reached 124,394, while 4,148,673 people have recovered. Thank goodness. And 13,443,900 vaccinations have been administered. South Africa. Anger as Amazon builds headquarters on sacred land. An indigenous group in South Africa has condemned a decision to go ahead with a multi-million dollar development in Cape Town, which will include the African headquarters of online giants Amazon. The Khoi community says the site, known as the River Club, is on sacred land. They are thought to have been the first to inhabit the area about 2,000 years ago and want it recognized as a World Heritage Location. Africa-wide. Africa condemns violence against Palestinians in East Jerusalem. African countries have come out to condemn the rising tensions in East Jerusalem over the possible eviction of Palestinian families that are living in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood. African governments are in solidarity with the Palestinian people, calling on the Israeli forces to end their violent acts against Palestinians and are urging the international community to continue supporting the Palestinian people through the implementation of relevant United Nations regulations and all other such agreements. Sierra Leone rediscovered coffee could boost farmers' livelihoods. Scientists have rediscovered rare wild coffee species in Sierra Leone with tolerance to high temperatures and fine taste, potentially setting the region on course to staging a comeback in the global coffee industry, a study says. The rediscovery of lost coffee stenophylla in Sierra Leone after years of searching could be a game changer in an industry currently dominated by coffee arabica species, which faces threats from climate change. Botswana, Zambia. New Botswana Zambia Bridge, a boon for the region. Botswana and Zambia have inaugurated a road and rail bridge linking the two different countries, marking the completion of a multi million dollar project aimed at easing a congestion at border crossings and boosting trade, stretching for 923 meters, some 3,000 feet, over the Zambezi River, the curved Kazungula Bridge provides a long-needed alternative route for hauliers. The bridge will lower the cost of doing business, will increase trade, and create jobs in the region. Nigeria. Nigerian security forces rescue 30 individuals kidnapped by gunmen. Nigerian security forces on Monday rescued 30 persons who were kidnapped while praying inside a mosque in the country's northwestern state of Zamfara. According to the police, a joint security operation comprising of the army, police and other allied security agencies led to the rescue of the victims of the kidnapping. Really good news. Djibouti. Flood walls and forests help Djibouti adapt to climate change. Climate change is leading to unpredictable rainfall in Djibouti, with devastating droughts and floods both on the rise. The government is taking action to adapt, supported by the United Nations Environment Programme. The authorities built an almost two kilometer long wall, technically referred to as a dike, to defend Gona Marsaki's neighborhood from the floods. The success of the initiative has now led to the approval of a much larger, almost $10 million project in Djibouti's Tajura and Dekil regions. Africa-wide. Dangote is still Africa's richest man. For the 10th time, Nigeria's entrepreneurial giant and richest black man on earth, Mr. Aliko Dangote has retained his position as the richest man in Africa with a net worth of 12.1 billion US dollars. Mozambique, Portugal to send another 60 troops to Mozambique on a training mission. Former colonialist Portugal will send a further 60 troops to Mozambique as part of a new cooperation agreement aimed at helping the country to tackle an Islamic State-linked insurgency in its north 
Portugal's defence minister has said. The EU is also planning on sending about 200 uh, or 300 EU soldiers to Mozambique on a training mission. Egypt. Egypt's Suez Canal to be expanded after a blockage. Egypt plans for the Suez Canal announced to widen and deepen the southern parts of the Suez Canal where a hulking vessel ran aground and closed off the crucial waterway and this was in March. The plan includes widening the canal's southernmost stretch by about 40 meters to the east and the side of the Sinai Peninsula. That segment would also be deepened to about 72 feet from the current 66 feet in depth, 30 kilometers in width. The double lane stretch of the canal will also be extended from 60 to 82 kilometers, allowing more vessels to pass through the particular canal. Uganda. Uganda deploys troops ahead of Museveni inauguration. Ugandan security operations have ramped up around the capital ahead of today's inauguration of President Yoweri Museveni. That includes tight security around the home of opposition leader Bobby Wine, who accused the government of fraud in January's election. The security measures seem to be a warning to the opposition from authorities. Rwanda. African-American rapper J. Cole is set to play for Rwanda in African Basketball League. American rapper J. Cole is set to play professional basketball for Rwandan side Patriots. The team will play Nigeria's Rivers Hoopers on Sunday, opening the first ever Basketball Africa League, BAL. Rumors of the signing began when the musician, whose full name is Jermaine Lamar Cole, was seen in the Rwandan capital of Kigali at the weekend. The team's coach, Alan Major, then confirmed the news to state broadcaster Rwanda TV on Monday. <laughs> Interesting news. Zimbabwe, photographer Tamari Kudita on winning a Sony World Photography Award. Zimbabwean photographer Tamari Kudita was named Open Photographer of the Year at the 2021 Sony World Photography Awards. Her portrait image titled African Victorian won in the category which honors single images. Tamari stated that she's using her craft to tell the stories of misrepresented people. Guinea. Negotiations with China turn complicated over Simandao Iron Ore Project. The shareholders of winning consortium Simandao, the Guinea authorities and their operational as well as financial partners have long been engaged in discussions, which are still far from over. However, construction on the mega project's first piece of infrastructure was finally launched on 23rd of March, one year and three months after the Sino-Singaporean Guinean Consortium was awarded its mining licenses. The aim of this project is to develop Simandao, the continent's largest iron ore deposit. Africa wide. Observers from ECOWAS regional block in Mali to assess the government's progress. Observers from the Economic Community of West African countries, ECOWAS regional bloc, met on Tuesday to discuss the Mali transitional government's progress on the electoral calendar for the upcoming presidential elections. The authorities have just announced an electoral timetable with the first round of presidential and parliamentary elections on the 27th of February 2022 and a constitutional referendum on the 31st of October. DRC $4 billion lost from dubious contracts with Israeli businessmen. The Democratic Republic of Congo, DRC, may have lost nearly $4 billion as a result of dubious mining and oil contracts signed with Israeli businessman Dan Gertler. Analysis of public financial data shows that between 2003 and 2021, the DRC has lost 1.95 billion US dollars in revenue. If nothing is done to stop this hemorrhage, an additional 1.76 billion dollars in royalties could escape the state coffers between 2021 and 2039. The new president, Felix Tshisekedi, has not yet taken any steps to investigate Mr. Goethe's mining transactions. While the country desperately needs this money to rebuild its economy. Senegal. Celebrating Senegal's revolutionary icon Omar Blondin Diop 
On May 11, 1973, Senegalese revolutionary activist Omar Blondin Diop was declared dead in a prison at Gori Island off the coast of Senegalese capital, Dakar. His life and tragic death have remained a potent symbol of the revolutionary struggle in Senegal. Diop is upheld as a martyr of neocolonialism. Ethiopia Streamlining turmeric production as a gainful cash crop, Ethiopia is a country endowed with many spice products. By adding values to spice products and processing parts of them, the nation exports spice to various parts of the world. Spice is, therefore, one area that helps the country to gain foreign currency income. Turmeric is one of the top listed spices in Ethiopia, which produces in the South Nation and partly in Aromia states. Little producers are partly processing turmeric and supplying for the international market. Producing turmeric both in quality and quantity and expanding market destinations is quite imperative to up the income from the export and make the farmers benefit more from this particular trade. Kenya, getting paid to sleep on the job a company advertises a $1,060 sleeping job. We all know of a friend or a close relative who takes sleep quite seriously and would nap at the slightest opportunity. Each night, a mattress review company might be looking for that friend of yours. The company recently advertised five positions of nap reviewers who will be paid $1,060 US dollars each to participate in a 30-day survey. The five will take part in a number of experiments to test theories such as the best duration of a nap to feel nice and refreshed, the effects of napping when you're fatigued, memory, motivation and even productivity. Zimbabwe ex-first lady accused of improper Mugabe burial. Former Zimbabwe's first lady Grace Mugabe has been summoned to appear before a traditional court over the improper burial of the late president Robert Mugabe. The former first lady is being accused of having gone against local culture by burying her husband at a family homestead instead of a place that's chosen by his relatives and his mother. In a letter from Chief Zimba, the traditional chief of Mugabe's home, home region, Mrs. Mugabe is being required to exhume the late president's body so that he can be reburied according to the culture of the Zimba people. She has also been asked to pay a fine of cattle and a goat for the violation. Sierra Leone. Government moves to end the death penalty. The government of Sierra Leone will move to end the death penalty in the country. Deputy Justice Minister Omaru Napoleon Koroma said on Wednesday, once the legislation goes to parliament and gets approved, that will end the story of the death penalty. President of the Sierra Leone Bar Association, Edina Michaela Swallow, took part in a roundtable discussion on the abolition of the death penalty. He spoke about the need for the abolition, adding that there is no proven justification that the death penalty can actually deter crimes of the same nature. Thank you so, so much for watching this video. Visit our YouTube channel, Tuna Cheki, to watch the full news report and our website at tunacheki.tv for all the latest African news updates. You can directly support this new series by becoming our YouTube member or becoming a patron. And remember, Africa is watching. And remember, you can also leave your suggestions of topics you'd like us to cover in the comments below.